How to fulfill, package, and ship your Etsy orders in 2024. From setting up shipping profiles to actually fulfilling an order to then printing your labels and finally shipping out your physical Etsy products. We are not gonna leave any stone unturned in this video. I made one of these videos twice a couple years back. This is just the latest update of how to do it since Etsy is constantly updating. All right, so I'm gonna jump into my computer screen here. And while we're here inside of my Etsy account, we're gonna go into settings and we are going to go into shipping settings. So the first thing that we need to do is tell Etsy what products have what type of shipping. So what we have to do is come in and set up a shipping profile. As you can see, I have pretty much all my products in this paid shipping profile. This is a custom fixed shipping profile that I made myself. You come in here and hit create a profile. You really have two options on how you can charge your customers for shipping. And obviously the third way is just offering free shipping when you're covering the cost of shipping entirely. Now. Another thing just to note here is they have a free shipping guarantee program that you can set up where basically you can go ahead and set up your shipping profile, but all items over $35 will automatically qualify for free shipping to that customer. But even with this, you still want to go ahead and set up a shipping profile because basically anything under $35 is still gonna fall into however you assign it here. If I come in here, you have option one, calculate the rate for me, meaning based off of the weight and size of the, the item that you put inside of your listing, it is going to calculate the rate at which it should cost you to ship the item. So that means they're gonna charge your customer a calculated rate that should be the equivalent of what it's gonna cost you to basically purchase the label. Now, it's not a complete wash when you put on calculated rate because say uh, Etsy calculates that the shipping label is $4.50, they're gonna charge your customer $4.50, but when you go and collect that $4.50 from your customer, you're still paying a merchant fee and a seller fee on that $4.50. So you're actually losing a little bit of money it's not a complete wash because when you go to buy that label it's still gonna cost you four dollars and fifty cents but they took your four dollars and fifty cents and deducted about nine and a half percent on top of that give or take just keep that in mind if I wanted to do calculated rate you can then put in your zip code elect your processing time this is how many days it takes you for you to ship out the item and you're going to want to make sure that whatever your processing time is you're going to want to make sure that you actually get your orders out in a timely manner because if your shipping labels don't go into transit within your processing time it's going to trigger etsy that says that you are late on shipping your orders you're going to want to make sure you do that then you want to elect where you're shipping i ship personally in the united states and worldwide now the shipping service that I personally use is USPS. It just tends to be the cheapest. And you're gonna go and elect your shipping service. If you want to allow them to pay for Priority, Priority Mail Express, USPS First Class Mail. Keep in mind USPS First Class Mail is usually the cheapest. Now this is if you're gonna offer free shipping no matter what, you can elect to do free domestic shipping. I probably wouldn't recommend offering free international shipping because that can get actually really expensive. You also have the opportunity to put a handling fee here and then you can give a name to that shipping profile that you just created. Now that is again on calculated shipping. Now if you wanna create a shipping profile where you're making up the price of shipping, you can also do that. That is actually what we do because we don't offer free shipping. Um, we don't do that $35 shipping thing. We kind of meet our customers halfway. We usually cover about half of the cost of shipping for our customers. Again, same thing if you wanted to do fixed price manually, United States, your zip code, your processing time. Now, because we're doing fixed price manually, we can put a stronger limitation on the types of shipping services that we offer. USPS First Class Mail is obviously the cheapest. What we will charge is a fixed price. 
and you can put in what your price is for one item and then what it is for every additional item. So again, this is not covering the whole cost of shipping our cost, but we're about meeting our customers about halfway. Now, the downfall of doing it this way is that when you do get an international order, you know, you can go and try to guesstimate every single location of every country they get orders from, but it's really hard to do that. I think I set up a, a specific location like Australia, the United Kingdom, France, Canada, and like Norway on actually identifying each other country. Basically, the top countries that we sell and pretty much ballparking what it costs us. But sometimes it's not perfect and we either overcharge or undercharge for it. And because it's fixed price manually and we don't wanna just give them the option to pick the most expensive shipping without actually paying for it, we can offer a shipping upgrade in case that they do want the Priority Mail Express. So we can come in here and hit, you know, we can create a custom name for it. We can say two to three day price already mail which is pretty much what the priority mail with usps is one to three day they say one to three day but i'm just gonna put two to three day and then i can set the more expensive price for priority mail i know people will say etsy favors you know stores and listings that offer free shipping but what we found in our particular niche keep in mind every niche is different if you're in a very price competitive niche sometimes it's not better to offer free shipping so that you can actually show a cheaper price on a front end. For our store specifically, we're on the top tier level of uh, our niche, selling at the highest price point. What we found is that our specific customer avatars don't really care to spend an extra four or five dollars for shipping. We're already spending the most money on our products in comparison to the rest of our niche. The only reason we can get away with that is because we have a value proposition that most people don't have when it comes to the quality of our items. But the shipping profile is created. So let's just, you can see here that this shipping profile already has 276 listings on it. Say it was this one that we just created. It says active listings is zero. Now we need to actually go ahead and add products to that shipping profile. How are we gonna do that? When we go back to our listings here, we can either highlight the whole page or we can highlight them one by one. We can click edit options and we can hit change shipping profile. And then we can go and find that shipping profile that we set up. And then that will automatically sync that unique shipping profile to the products. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go actually and fulfill an order. So we're gonna go to the orders and shipping tab. We can either fulfill orders one by one by highlighting it and then hitting getting ship get shipping labels or we can highlight the entire page and we can then hit get shipping label all right so now that this is pulled up here as you can see there is all of my labels but the review button for whatever reason is not allowing me to purchase so even if this was highlighted i never just hit review and purchase i want to actually go through each one of these to make sure that the correct amount is being charged for right now this is saying that these ones are good to go but for whatever reason if this is saying there's not enough information available you're going to want to click in there and one Add a preset to it. Look, what it would look like for you is something like this, and you can add in the weight and the pounds and the dimension of your package. And before we said that it was first class mail when we were setting up our shipping profile, but they recently changed it and the language that they use now, and I think it's to make it cheaper, is USPS Ground Advantage, which is technically the same thing as first class mail, except it allows the weight to be a little bit more because you see it's giving me the option here, even though it's one pound and eight ounces. So this is like new and changing, but normally what we wanna do is select the cheapest option, unless of course, it shows here that the buyer paid for priority mail. If they paid for upgrade, upgraded shipping, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I actually give them upgraded shipping, but they paid the standard $4, which wasn't for priority mail. Now, again, to make a preset is if I filled out the information here, you can come down here. It already says save label as a preset, but there would be a button here that says save preset, and then it would show up in this drop down menu here. Now, this is a new thing that's been <laughs> weird with Etsy, and I don't know if this is because we don't offer free shipping. I think it makes us do this preset thing now because I'm charging flat rate for shipping, and you wanna make sure that the link with height and weight 
is actually true to what your package that you're shipping. Well, let's just say for whatever reason, I shipped out an item and I said it was one pound eight ounces and I paid 9.17. Um, but what actually happened is when it got to the post office, it actually was only one pound. The, the, po the USPS post office actually will catch this and whether you underpaid or overpaid for a shipping label, it will actually adjust the amount. So you might may or may not get a credit or get an adjustment on your payment account, whether you overpaid or underpaid for the label. Even though all these are still filled out, I'm still getting an invalid weight here because I got a huge order and this order is actually going to Canada. So you can see here that we charged them a fixed amount of $58. And then basically it's saying that there is not enough information here. And so this happens from time to time for international orders. I'm gonna manually make you have to put in the value and the weight per item. So what we're gonna do here, since this is a huge order, we're actually, this is actually gonna end up going into a box, a medium sized box. And obviously I would need to put all these items together and weigh out how much they are in my office because I actually don't know, but let's just pretend that the box ended up being, let's just say um, five pounds, right? So five pounds for a medium sized box is about $58. So I collected 58 and it's gonna charge me 56. So pretty close. Now it's still not letting me buy it here because it wants me to break down the weight and the value per item. So I would then come in here and I'm just making this up here. But for the, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna put something in here. And now when I go in to put the weight, the weight does have to be equal to five pounds so it matches what we said. And because there's a quantity of two, it's gonna pick up two pounds here. Um, this is a quantity of one, so now we're at three pounds. Now we're at four pounds for a quantity of one, and now we're at five pounds of a quantity of one. And so now it's allowing me to review and purchase the label. So I'm about to purchase labels for $126. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit purchase. Okay. So now that I just hit purchase, now I have the option to print shipping labels, print packing slips and create USPS scan form. So I'm actually going to want to do all three of these. So first I'm going to hit print shipping labels and it's going to throw up a PDF that looks like this. And the third thing here is a USPS scan form. What this scan form does is when we go to the post office and they have to do a scan this form instead of them having to scan in each label one by one. It's a really beneficial to use scan forms because it gets your packages checked into the post office faster. So instead of them having to sit and wait in, in the waiting area, you know, usually you can leave your scan form with an attendant sooner and once they scan it, it takes the liability um, out of your hands and it shows your customer that not only did your package get a label purchase for it, but it's actually actually out of your hands and now it's in the post office hands. So if they wanted to come back and cancel the order or change something, right? Sometimes that happens or people say, oh, I put the wrong address and their tracking doesn't look like it's in transit yet, even though it actually is dropped off. By using a scan form, that means it usually gets checked in earlier. So if someone, you know, in that 24 hour period of you waiting for it to just get checked into the post office, someone does reach out and say, hey, I need to change my address. And you say, well, I actually already dropped it off. Sometimes they'll come back and be like, it says that it's not in transit yet when actually it is. So it's just an extra layer of proof to them that you know, it's actually not in your hands anymore. Now that we have the labels ready to print and we went through all of the steps, I'm gonna show you how to print them. I'm gonna do an unboxing of a new thermal label printer that I just got sent from Mumbin. It's their 941B Bluetooth thermal label printer. As you can see, it is very small, but it's super efficient and cost-effective. I've been through a journey when it comes to printing labels. I I started out with like a regular HP, which was really expensive with ink. And then I transitioned to using a brother printer with half sheets on full piece of paper on, but that was also kind of ineffective because half sheets were one, they just, 
waste paper and the sheets didn't actually break apart so we would have to print them all out and then we would have to use scissors and cut them one by one to break them apart which is just super inefficient so the mumbin printers they're specifically for this they're for e-commerce and they print super super fast and it's the most cost effective all right so now i'm going to show you literally in 60 seconds how to set this printer up i'm pretty tech savvy but when it comes to setting up hardware i can get frustrated pretty easily so the fact that one of the first things in their instruction guide is just a link directly to the video of how to set it up made it really, really comforting and easy. So I just went to that link right there, the mumbim.biz slash unboxing, and I just followed the video. First things first is the power adapter and plugging everything in. All I did is plug in the back here and then into the wall. Then I turned it on and then you just click that button to open the top and you set the paper in the tray. Now, once you close it, it is going to adjust itself. So it's centered and I set up this sticker tray behind it. So this is really cool that they sent me because what that bar there is for is actually a roll of stickers. It looks like this. You can print your stickers or your labels from this thing as well, which I'm actually curious and I'm going to try to do next. From there, I plugged another cord into the printer and connected it to my computer. And then we go to the Mumbin, directly to the Mumbin website and click the support button here. I select the printer that I have and then I click how to install the driver on a Mac since I'm on a Mac. And then that basically led me to this link here to download the driver and it's literally that easy and now that it's downloaded when I go to print my labels you can see that the mumbin printer is showing up and I just want to make sure that the paper size is four by six and then we can go and print it and all your labels come out accordingly so easy fast and then we can just put it on our packages take our scan form and then head to the post office and guys, there's a link in my description if you want to purchase one of these printers for your store. Guys, I hope you got some value out of this video. Please leave some comments, questions, or concerns down below. Thank you guys so much for staying until the end, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.